AI-driven breakthrough on Alzheimer's? We'll find out about that right now. Cambridge scientists have developed an artificially intelligent tool capable of predicting in four out of five cases whether people with early signs of dementia will remain stable or develop Alzheimer's disease. We've created a tool which is much more sensitive than current approaches at predicting whether someone will progress from mild symptoms to Alzheimer's, they said, and thanks directly to the University of Cambridge for this one, which, by the way, may be the finest university in the world. The team says this new approach could reduce the need for invasive and costly diagnostic tests while improving treatment outcomes early when interventions such as lifestyle changes or new medicines have the chance to work best. And I'm going to make a comment about what they just said at the end. Dementia poses a significant global health care challenge, affecting over 55 million people worldwide at an estimated cost of $820 billion. So that's very soon going to eclipse a trillion dollars of cost of treatment a year, which is a massive number. The number of cases ex is expected to 3x over the next 50 years. The main cause of dementia is Alzheimer's disease, which accounts for 60 to 80 percent of the cases. So dementia is, in most cases, early Alzheimer's but not completely right. Roughly a third of the cases are not Alzheimer's caused. Early detection is crucial, yet early dementia diagnosis and prognosis may not be accurate without the use of invasive or expensive tests such as PET scans or lumbar puncture, which are not available everywhere. As a result, up to a third of patients may be misdiagnosed or others diagnosed too late for treatment to be effective. So that last thing is very important. If dementia and or Alzheimer's is diagnosed too late, there's nothing they can do for it still. A team led by scientists from the Department of Psychology at the University of Cambridge has developed a machine learning model able to predict whether and how fast an individual with mild memory and thinking problems will progress to developing Alzheimer's disease. So how did they do that? And by the way, if you like this episode so far, please like, subscribe, and share it. That's the best way to grow the channel. Also, please subscribe. Really help appreciate your ongoing support by becoming a subscriber. And finally, please support us on Patreon. Really appreciate your financial support because that allows us to go to TED AI in October and other cutting edge conferences that we can only go to with your financial support. The researchers show that it is more accurate than current clinical diagnostic tests. Translation, this is a real breakthrough. To build their model, the researchers used routinely collected non-invasive and low-cost patient data, cognitive tests, and structural MRI scans showing gray matter atrophy, aka shrinking brain, from over 400 individuals who were part of a research cohort in the USA. You don't want to be part of that research co cohort, really. They then tested the model using real-world patient data from a further 600 participants from the U.S. cohort, and importantly, longitudinal data from 900 people from memory clinics in the U.K. and Singapore. So longitudinal data is recording results of what happened to people over time. So that was critical. That was independent verification of the model, separate from the data used to build it and do the separate run on it. So here we go. The algorithm was able to distinguish between people with stable, mild cognitive impairment, boy, that's a mouthful, and those who progressed to Alzheimer's disease within a three-year period. And that's the unfortunate truth of this stuff. The decline is quick. That happened to my dad. The algorithm was able to correctly identify individuals who went on to develop Alzheimer's in 82% of cases 
and correctly identify those who didn't in 81% of cases from cognitive tests and MRI scans alone. But wait, it gets even better. The algorithm was around three times more accurate at predicting the progression to Alzheimer's than the current standard of care. This shows that the model could significantly reduce misdiagnosis. So this truly is a breakthrough, a 3x improvement in diagnostics. Thank you, AI. The model also allowed the researchers to stratify people with Alzheimer's disease using data from each person's first visit to the memory clinic into three groups. Those whose symptoms would remain stable, around half of participants, so that's good news, half of people don't get worse. Those who would progress to Alzheimer's slowly, around 35%, and those who would progress more rapidly are the remaining 15%. So you definitely don't want to be in that 15%. These predictions were validated when looking at follow-up data over the next six years. So this model has been rigorously validated, and it works. And it will get better and better as more and more data is fed into it. It's easy to think that fairly quickly, a couple of years, this thing will be over 90% accurate. That's very realistic. Importantly, these 50% of people who have symptoms such as memory loss but remain stable would be better directed to a different clinical pathway as their symptoms may be due to other causes than dementia, such as anxiety or depression. So this article is really fascinating for a bunch of reasons, but one of the things that surprised me was anxiety and depression, which are rampant and still significantly untreated or undertreated can cause mild memory loss. I had no idea about that, but that's not good. That's a very good reason to get treated for your anxiety or depression. Senior author Professor Zoe Kortsey says, this has the potential to significantly improve patient well-being, showing us which people need the closest care while removing the anxiety for those patients who we predict who will remain stable. Yeah, that would make you a lot less anxious. The algorithm was validated using independent data that included almost 900 individuals who attended memory clinics in the UK and Singapore. So that validation is key, and it's what all AI models need, independent, rigorous validation to prove that they're working correctly, especially, and most especially, in a medical setting. The researchers say this shows it should be applicable in a real-world patient clinical setting, which means that it's highly likely that this thing will be approved shortly for clinical trials around the world. Memory problems are common as people age. The fact that we might be able to reduce this uncertainty with information we already have is exciting and is likely to become even more important as new treatments are continually developed. Professor Kurtzy said, AI models are only as good as the data they are trained on. To make sure ours has the potential to be adopted in a healthcare setting, we trained and tested it on routinely collected data, not just from research cohorts, but from patients in actual memory clinics. So that is a key, that they created and validated the model from things that are done all the time, not special procedures. This shows it will be generalizable to a real-world setting. The team now hope to extend their model to other forms of dementia and using different types of data, such as markers and blood tests. So that's another thing that AI is helping in a major way with is using markers in blood for diagnosis of disease. Professor Kurtzy added, our vision is to scale up our AI tool to help clinicians assign the right person at the right time to the right diagnostic and treatment pathway. So this is critical. You don't want to overtreat or needlessly treat people. It's wasting scarce resources, which is still true of the healthcare field. 
That's number one. Number two, it removes anxiety and potential depression from people who are not going to get worse, which is half of them. And number three, it fast tracks the people who are likely to have the worst outcome into the fastest treatment. So this is a huge breakthrough, again, courtesy of AI, and it's reasonable to conclude, done on numerous articles we've done on this channel, that AI may have the biggest impact on any field in healthcare, which is good news for us humans. So thanks so much for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and share. Help us grow the channel. Also, please support us on Patreon. Last year, we went to TED AI. We can only attend with your support this year. Thanks so much. Take care. See you next time. Bye.